Well, we've talked a lot about anger. Uh, we talked about um, a lot of the, the things that anger has um, produced and does in our lives. The negativity, the broken relationships, the regrets, the all those things. We talked a little bit um, yesterday about justifiable anger and, and the, the rare occasions when there may be such a thing. What I want to do is is kind of step out of this just for a second um, and, and not not out of anger, but but kind of like the next step. But but I'm, I'm going to do it in a little different way. Usually on these thoughts for the day, it's we kind of load it with scripture and it's a talk about scripture. What I want to do is actually get go a little bit of a practical direction with you. Um, and, and not that scripture is not practical, but a practical in the sense of um, some some advice about implementation uh, in interpersonal communication that I think has direct impact or import in regard to the issue of anger. So oh, uh, I think a good starting verse that maybe will just kind of sit over us here a little bit over the next couple of days is First uh, Peter 3, 7. Now, it's a verse that's written towards husbands in regard to their wives. But I want to key in on one phrase. Likewise, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel, since they are heirs with you of the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered. What's this have to do with anger? What's it got to do with interpersonal communication? It's this little phrase that in English is rendered uh, in an understanding way. Live with your wives in an understanding way. In Greek, it is katanosis, live with your wives literally according to knowledge. I think what happens in so much communication is we get angry and we don't know the first thing about how we can approach communicating in a way that, that maybe helps us not let anger well up. So there's a way we can slow roll our communication and not let anger emerge. And I want to spend some time thinking about that with you. So here's the first of five steps, five steps. The first thing you got to do is you have to seek to understand. You have to seek to understand. It's the first step in healthy interpersonal communication. You seek to understand. Now, here, what does that mean? It means that you are going to live according to knowledge. It means that you're going to ask, do, do I really grasp what this person is saying? Do I really get it? Do I grasp why they are saying it? Is it born from pain? Is it born from woundedness? Is it born from misunderstanding? Is it, is it born from them trying to understand? Like what and why? Um, we might ask this, have I listened well? If you've not listened well, then you're not prepared to respond. And what happens is we end up hearing something that bothers us and we're ready to go at it. But we haven't taken time to ask, do we actually understand? Do we understand? So you got to want to understand. But the first step is understanding, understanding, grasping what, why, and have I listened well? So let's seek to be better listeners so that we won't let anger be the thing that drives us, right? James 1, quick, that we would be uh, quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry. May the Lord bless you today.